Personally, I think we're getting some amazing performance out of the Steam Deck OS PC, especially given that you can build one of these for under $180 right now. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a pretty capable, small form factor, low cost gaming PC for under $180. And instead of running Windows on it, which it's totally capable of doing, we're actually going to be installing SteamOS 3, otherwise known as Steam Deck OS. And given the price that you could put something like this together for right now, I personally think it would make a great little couch Linux gaming PC. We've got a really nice front end here because we're running the same operating system that's on the Steam Deck. So for the base of the unit, we're going to be using one of my favorites. This is an Optiplex small form factor that has a 4th gen i7 and the price on these has actually come way down and even before they were pretty cheap. But you could pick these up for under $70 on eBay right now. And you know, if you check your local listings, you might be able to find it for a bit cheaper than that. You could also go with the Lenovo or an HP variant. But when it comes to the CPU, I would highly recommend using something like the i7-4790. Four cores, eight threads, up to four gigahertz. And it really does still perform pretty decently for PC gaming nowadays. The one I have here is an Optiplex 3020, came with 12 gigabytes of RAM, a one terabyte hard drive, and the i7-4790. We don't have much space to work in here for a GPU, and you know, gaming on these integrated graphics isn't going to work out in 2023, so we also need to add in a GPU. Now if you went with the mini tower case, you're going to have a lot more options, because you don't need to use a single slot or a low profile card, but since we have a small form factor unit here, I went with one of my favorite newer cards, and you can actually pick them up for around $100 used on eBay right now, it's the RX 6400. It's not the most powerful card on the market, but it is based on RDNA 2, and since we're going to be running SteamOS 3 on this, it just functions much better with an AMD card. And this is about the most powerful, low-profile, single-slot AMD card on the market right now. It's got 4 gigabytes of gddr 6 VRAM, and we've got kind of a boost clock up to around 2300 megahertz. Now again, I want to mention, if you don't mind building a little larger, you can find a card for around the same price with a bit more power, but I love these small form factor builds, and that's exactly why I chose this card. Now when it comes to storage, a lot of these Optiplexes and many uh, HPs and the Lenovo's will come with a 500 to a 1 terabyte drive. Using a mechanical drive in 2023 is a bit sluggish, but uh, I mean, you can definitely do it. And running Linux from a mechanical drive isn't as slow as something like Windows, especially because we've kind of got a cut down system here with SteamOS 3. But if you don't mind spending a little more money, I would highly recommend picking up an SSD. These older Optiplexes don't support an M.2 drive, so you'll need a 2.5 inch drive. But one terabyte SSDs on Amazon right now are about $50 and it's well worth it. It's just going to make life a lot faster. But I wanted to go really budget with this, so I'll be using the one terabyte drive that came with this unit. Now once it's all together, it looks something like this. I mean, we've got a very small form factor PC. The power supply that comes included with these 3020s will definitely support the 6400 and the i7-4790. The GPU itself only pulls around 35 watts on maximum from the PCIe slot. Now that we've got everything together, it's time to talk about the operating system that we're going to be using. Now unfortunately, Valve hasn't released SteamOS 3 to the public as an ISO that can install on different systems. But we do have an option here known as Hollow ISO. Basically what they've done is taken the Steam Deck recovery image and reworked it. They've added a lot of stuff and cut some stuff out that was specifically tailored for the Steam Deck. But this works really well and it's based on SteamOS 3. You can install it from a USB drive to uh, whatever drive you want to run this from. You could actually even run this from a USB drive or an external hard drive if you want to. And in the end, this is the operating system that's running on the Steam Deck. Now, uh, NVIDIA does not work with this right now. There are some workarounds, but the developers kind of cut out NVIDIA support because uh, there have been updates that have broken a lot of stuff from Valve themselves. So AMD cards are the way to go with Hollow ISO or Steam Deck OS 3 at the time of making this video. I will leave a link for the GitHub in the description. Actually really easy to install. If you've ever installed any operating system, you can do this with no problems. Alright, so since I'm running from this mechanical drive, boot times are a bit longer than I like. So that's really why I mentioned get an SSD. It's going to add a little more to the end cost of everything, but it's well worth it. I mean, you're just going to have much faster speeds. 
But here it is, up and running on the Optiplex. You can use a mouse and keyboard to navigate the full operating system, or you can pick up a cheap Bluetooth dongle. You can get them for about $5 on Amazon and use something like an Xbox or a PlayStation controller. Or you could just go wired with it. It's gonna eliminate any kind of latency. But with this, we've got everything working that would work on the Steam Deck, except for TDP control for the CPU and GPU. Heading over to the performance menu, we can get all the information we need listed on screen. We can actually limit the frame rate also. I'm just gonna turn this off. We've also got system-wide FSR. The only thing that's not working from the performance menu, like I mentioned, is TDP control. But really, I mean, we kinda wanna run this at full boat. We don't have to worry about battery life with this because we're plugged into the wall. It's gonna be a stationary system. So uh, we're good to go with that. If I head over to settings, I'll give you a look here. Now I wish this came with 16 gigs of RAM and a lot of the times you'll probably find them with 16 gigs, but this one only had 12. We've got that i7-4790, four cores, eight threads, up to four gigahertz. And we're using the RX 6400. And that card only pulls a maximum of around 36 watts from the PCIe slot and runs at about 2300 megahertz. We've got that low profile version in here. But if you're going to go with a larger system, I would recommend something like an RX 580. I've actually done some testing on another machine with the 580 and SteamOS 3 runs really well with that card. One more tip here. If you start up a game, it's only going to run at 720p until you go to each game, properties, and set the resolution. So now from the settings in the game, we can go up to 1080p or you could go up to 4K if your system's gonna handle it. But out of the box, you're gonna be limited to 720p. So this does need to be enabled. But with all that out of the way, let's get into a little bit of gameplay. We're gonna start out here with Cyberpunk 2077. And it runs way better than I thought it would on this machine. We're at 1080p with a medium low mix and FSR is set to auto. Just show you real quick, we are at 1080p on the RX 6400. Initially, I went into this at 720p, but uh, just seeing how it performed like that, took it up to 1080, got a low medium mix, and if you don't mind going down to 900p, we could take a lot of those settings we have at low up to medium and be good to go with this. I mean, this is not bad performance at all. We're getting an average of 72 FPS at 1080p on this setup. Now here's one I haven't tested in a little while in Linux, Sonic Frontiers, and there have been a lot of updates specifically tailored for the Steam Deck, so uh, on this we are putting out more power than the Steam Deck can. We've got a low high mix here at 1080p. Every once in a while I did see a dip down to the mid 50s, but I think that was kind of shader cache going on in the background. But yeah, I mean Sonic Frontiers is playable in Linux on this machine also. Next up, we've got Doom Eternal, and unfortunately, on some systems that I test this with on Linux, I lose sound. I was hoping that this would be fixed, but I believe it's a Proton problem. Really unfortunate that I wasn't able to capture the sound here, but we are at 1080p medium settings, and we can get an average of 76 FPS out of this game. We've also got dynamic resolution scale that you could mess around with if you want to, but we're at a straight 1080p medium with this one. Personally, I love the new updates that they've brought over to The Witcher 3, and I've been getting much better performance in Linux because we now have access to FSR. So we're at 1080p medium with FSR set to balanced, and we can get an average of around 78 FPS out of this. And again, with this RX 6400, 900p on a lot of this stuff would work out really well, but everything we've taken a look at so far can be locked down at 60 with the settings we use. Here's Spider-Man Miles Morales, and even Spider-Man Remastered is one of those games that's given me a lot of issues in Linux. Now on the Steam Deck, we definitely get pretty good performance for what we're working with there, but on something like this, we should be seeing, you know, over 60 with it, especially given that we're at low settings with FSR set to balanced. And I'll tell you, in Windows with these same settings, same exact setup, I get an average of around 81 FPS. But in Linux, as you can see, we're dipping under 60. So this is one of those problematic games along with Spider-Man Remastered. And it's really hit or miss. On the same system, if I reboot this game, I could get in here and I might be able to get a little better performance or it's just gonna kind of fall on its face and give me under 30. So it's really all over the place right now. And finally, Project Cars 2. We'll throw at least one racing game in here. 1080p, medium high mix, 
Not a problem to run in this game. I know it's older, but it's still really fun if you're into Rallycross. This is one of my favorite games for it. So in the end, I think a lot of people would be happy with the performance this is putting out given that you can build this for under $180. Now these are kind of eBay and Amazon prices right now. If you check your local Craigslist and other websites, you might be able to find these PCs for a bit cheaper. And if you wanted to get more out of a system like this, go with an RX 580 and a larger form factor case. You can pick up these Optiplexes for about the same price, but you're going to get the larger case. It's a mini tower case, so you got a lot more room in there for a GPU. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave links in the description. And I'd also like to know your thoughts on the performance this thing's putting out, given the price you can build one of these for. Is this something you'd be interested in doing, you know, building it for a couch PC or maybe just something to mess around with? Let me know your thoughts down below. And like always, thanks for watching.